My MOOF University YouTube videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. If you'd like to pay for the use of the videos, visit my website at moofuniversity.com, click on the pay-what-you-like link at the top of the page, and follow the instructions on that page. Thank you, and enjoy. In this video, I want to talk about transporting the acetyl-CoA from the mitochondria to the cytosol for fatty acid synthesis. So, I've actually made a video about this, or at least kind of about this, when I made the fatty acid metabolism videos, it was entitled Part 6 of 6, Fatty Acid Synthesis Overview. But now I think it's part of 8 of 8, because I added two more parts. Anyway, this is actually a, a copy from that video, so you can go ahead and watch that video before watching this one, because this one is basically the same stuff, except with more details and maybe a little bit more clarity and completeness. So let's hop to it. So... What do we want? We want to get acetyl-CoA from the mitochondrial matrix out into the cytosol for fatty acid synthesis. So what I've got here is on the left side here is the mitochondrial matrix. This first membrane here is the inner mitochondrial membrane. Then the space between these two membranes is the intermembrane space. This outer membrane here is the outer mitochondrial matrix. And over to the right here is the cytosol. So let's start up here at the top left with acetyl-CoA because that's really what we're interested in. We want to get this 2-carbon acetyl-CoA unit out into the cytosol. Problem. It doesn't cross the mitochondrial membranes. Okay. Now, oxaloacetate, a 4-carbon molecule, also doesn't cross the mitochondrial membrane. However, when you link these two together to make citrate, you create a 6-carbon molecule that can cross. It's got this little transport protein that allows it to flow out into the cytosol. Linking these two molecules, this acetyl-CoA and this oxaloacetate, together, that is done by an enzyme called citrate synthase, which we've actually seen before. Where have we seen that before? The TCA cycle. It's the first step of the TCA cycle. So once we create the citrate and it's out into the cytosol, well, what can we do with it? Well, we can just cut it right back up, right? Cut it back up into the 4-carbon molecule and the 2-carbon molecule that we started with. So, um, that is done by an enzyme called citrate lyase. So this is actually a new enzyme. We haven't seen this one before. I mean, we did talk about it in the previous video, but we didn't go into too much detail. Anyway, um, this is just essentially doing the opposite of citrate synthase, except it's going to require an investment of energy here. And it cleaves, it, cleaves the citrate into oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA. So now we've got acetyl-CoA in the cytosol. So that's awesome, right? So this acetyl-CoA can now go to fatty acid synthesis. Awesome. Okay. There's still a bit more obviously here, so we're going to talk about the rest of this here. This oxaloacetate is going to be turned into malate, and that is catalyzed by an enzyme called malate dehydrogenase, which we've also seen before. Where have we seen that? Also in the TCA cycle. However, in the TCA cycle, we went from malate to oxaloacetate in the last step of the TCA cycle, and that required an NAD plus and yielded an NADH. This reaction is going backwards, so instead of having, um, instead of making an NADH, we're going to be using an NADH, right? Because this uh, carbonyl group is getting reduced, so it's going to be reduced by that NADH, NADH to yield an NAD plus. Once we have this malate, this malate is going to be converted into pyruvate. And that's going to be catalyzed by an enzyme called malic enzyme, also a new enzyme. And in this step, what's happening is that this 4-carbon molecule is being turned into the 3-carbon molecule. So this is, uh, well, two things are happening here. First things first is that this hydroxyl group here is being oxidized to a carbonyl group. The next thing is that this carboxyl group here is being lost as a carbon dioxide. So this is an oxidative reaction, right? an oxidation reaction, because this hydroxyl group is being turned into this carbonyl group, and it's a decarboxylation, decarboxylation reaction, so it's an oxidative decarboxylation reaction. So we see the decarboxylation here. What is going to be um, uh, the oxidizing agent? In this case, it's actually NAD plus, and excuse me, NADP, NADP plus. So, and that gives us an NADPH, 
And this is actually what I mentioned in the, in the intro video, that one of the ways to get NADPH was the pentose phosphate pathway. The other way is from acetyl-CoA transport from the mitochondria to the, mitos to the cytosol, and that's because of here, because of this, this malic enzyme. Malic enzyme actually creates NADPH. So once this NADPH is made, this can go and be used for fatty acid synthesis along with these acetyl-CoAs. Once we have this pyruvate, this pyruvate can go across the inner and uh, across the outer and inner mem mitochondrial membranes, go back into the matrix, and then it could be turned back into oxaloacetate via the pyruvate carboxylase reaction, right? And that, that requires an investment of ATP and a carbon dioxide. Um, for this carboxyl carboxylation reaction, and we've actually seen that enzyme before as well. That where have we seen that? We've seen that in gluconeogenesis. So actually, let's make a little note of all that stuff that we just mentioned. So we saw this in the TCA, we've seen this in the TCA, and we've seen this in gluconeogenesis. So we've seen all of those enzymes before. So it's really just citrate lyase and malic enzyme that are in the new, the new enzymes here that we haven't really discussed in too much detail before. And they are kind of the main role players here as far as uh, us learning something new. So that answers this question, which of these enzymes have we seen before? This question here, does it make sense to be investing ATP energy into these steps? So I'm specifically referring to this step here and this step here. Well, what are we really trying to do here? We're trying to get these acetyl-CoAs from the mitochondrial matrix to the cytosol. For what purpose, though? Well, for the purpose of fatty acid synthesis. Okay, well, let's think about this. Fatty acid synthesis. If we're building fatty acids, we're probably not breaking them down. We normally don't have opposing processes, processes occurring at the same time. So we're not having um, beta oxidation occur. We want fatty acid synthesis to occur. So if we, were going to, if we want to build fatty acids, we're not breaking them down for energy, which probably means we don't need energy, which means we probably already have some. Right? In fact, if we're building fatty acids, we want to store energy. Right? So if we want to store energy, that means we probably already have some. So it does make sense that we are investing ATP in both of these in this whole entire pathway. Okay, cool. So now let's think about this a little bit further. So basically, for every one acetyl-CoA that we transported into the cytosol, we, we get one NADPH. So if this keeps happening, right, let me scroll right back up for just one second. So if this keeps happening, the point of shuttling this um, pyruvate back in is to regenerate this oxaloacetate, so we have another oxaloacetate ready to go to get another acetyl-CoA across. And each time we tra uh, transport that acetyl-CoA across, we get one NADPH. So the question is, is that enough NADPH to actually like build the fatty acid. Well, let's take the example that we're going to be working with, right? Palmitate, the 16 carbon fatty acid. So, with the 16 carbon fatty acid, how many acetyl CoAs will we need? Well, each acetyl CoA is two carbons long. Two. And we need 16. How many of these will we need? Well, we'll need eight, right? Eight times two, 16 carbons. So that means we're going to transport eight acetyl CoAs across the mitochondrial membranes out into the cytosol, which means we'll get eight and ADPH. So will that be enough? Okay. So let's see here. Uh, by the way, this this whole thing that I'm talking about right now, this is totally an oversimplification and it's really just for the introduction. The detailed steps of this process are in another video. Okay. So just before anyone gets mad at me. <laughs> okay, so we've got we're gonna basically link eight of these um, acetyl CoA. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight acetyl CoAs, eight two carbon units, and we're going to link them together. To link these two, we're going to have those four steps of fatty acid synthesis, right? The condensation reaction, the first reduction, the dehydration, and the following reduction. And of course, I'm not, I haven't detailed all that stuff just yet, but that's going to require two reduction steps. Each, each time you link another acetyl-CoA, that's going to uh, have those four steps of the of uh, fatty acid synthesis occur. So in there is two reduction steps. Two reduction steps, that means two NADPHs are required each time you link them. So there's going to be two NADPH required here, two required here, two required here, two, 
2, 2, and 2 in these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 rounds total. So that's going to be 14 NADPHs will be required. So if transporting the acetyl-CoA out into the cytosol gives us 8 NADPH, right, assuming we're building palmitate, that means, well, how many of these steps are accounted for? If we have 8 NADPHs, that means these these right here are covered, right? We have enough NADPH that results from the transport to cover these first four um, rounds, but then these last rounds are not covered. So we still need um, we still need six more NADPHs. So these are not covered or accounted for. So the question is where where do the other six required NADPH molecules come from? And the answer is the pentose phosphate pathway. Okay, so I'm going to uncover a little secret back up here. It's not really a secret, <laughs> but if we think about this, right? I've got a little. I'm, I'm kind of sneaky here. I hid this from you guys. So right here, this is really tiny down here, but this is the pentose phosphate pathway's first step, right? Um, taking glucose and turning it into ribulose 5-phosphate, the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase step, that yields, that gives you NADPH, right? So we get some NADPH, oops, we get some NADPH out of this, and that also goes to fatty acid synthesis. So the rest of the NADPHs come from the pentose phosphate pathway. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching.